Hello everyone, this is Mark from the Things I Owe. I'm with Carla. Hello guys. Uh, so sorry for being uh, 17 minutes late, but we had some technical issues with the demo. But now we are ready to, to start, um, uh, to start uh, the webinar. So let me check. Uh, I have the video around open. OK. So let's start uh, with a quick presentation for new people um, about what's, uh, what's the things I owe, what do we do. And finally, we will show you how to connect a Sigfox device and launch a phone call uh, with a Twilio service. So, OK, at the things I owe, we are an IoT platform. We have um, companies that make products to collect data uh, store it, analyze it, and visualize it uh, with a very flexible tool that can that enhance your company or your product uh, really easy. Uh, so actually, uh, we are speaking with companies that in a week, they have several dashboards for all their customers and with thousands of devices connected. Uh, really straightforward tool. OK, so we are called the most simple enterprise IoT platform platform so no development costs uh, it works out of the box it's controlled by you so we actually can give a training to your team so you can control everything actually you own the data uh, we only have rights to process and manage the data but you are the owner of the data and finally we have a, a support team dedicated to give you support so um, that's what what we can do for you so how it works we connect your devices through our secure cloud solution. Uh, we can connect it with Sigfox or with other product communication protocol standards or proprietary protocols, actually. And you can visualize data with our own dashboard using the things I owe. Or actually, you can consume data from your own uh, websites, backends, uh, ERP, CRMs, etc. So it's not a mandatory to use our, our own dashboard if you don't need it. All right. We also can provide bidirectional communication from the dashboard or from your CRM or ERP to your devices, even if they are Sigfox, for example. Um, it's really easy to configure, provision devices, create um, create products, uh, send data back to the products, etc. And we can adapt our solution to your needs. Uh, and also, as I said previously, uh, so if you have a proprietary protocol or you want to analyze data in specific ways. We can help you with that. Um, so we can as well configure. Uh, we can with the things I owe. It's really easy to configure your dashboards and applications, and uh, it's a tool that provides full flexibility and uh, and actually you can manage. So this dashboard, it was uh, it was done in, uh, really quickly, for example, and actually we can give you this training so you can manage yourself your dashboards and the visualizations for your customers. Everything goes under your logo and under your URL and with your corporate identity and color palette, etc. From the very first minute, okay. So no, no one should get access to the things that I owe to get uh, to offer data to their customers, because we think that yeah, it makes a lot of sense that everything that is under your um, so a product that it's yours, your customers or third-party companies should access to your domain actually to to consume the data that they generate. And finally, we have a, a really um, interesting tool to analyze your data. OK? Uh, we, this is one of the tools that we are going to focus today on the demo. So we are going to show you how to create jobs, triggers. Actually, we call it cloud code. <coughs> that it's a tool that we use to apply business logics on top of the data. So actually, you can apply advanced algorithms, such as predictive maintenance, or artificial algorithms, artificial intelligence algorithms, machine learning, or simple uh, mathematical uh, algorithms on the top of the data for your company. Okay, This is one of the most interesting tools that we have with the dashboards. And it's actually being uh, used a lot, uh, first with Sigfox devices, second for yeah, companies who actually yeah, want to analyze data. And finally, we also provide integrations with third parties. 
So once your device is connected, you can connect them with, with third party devices. So today, we are going to show on the demo how to connect a device from a cold chain tra uh, tracking, and I'm going to show you in a few seconds, with Twilio, and uh, with so a Sigfox device with Twilio to send phone calls or SMS, and finally with MailChimp to send emails as well. OK, and you will see that it's pretty straightforward to do it. OK. So and what's the price to do that? No, maybe some of you can uh, no, have this question. Okay, how much does it cost? Because that sounds so nice. It just costs 169 euros per month, up to 1,500 devices. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's that's so easy. So you can actually go to the things like oh, and sign up and create an account, right, Carlos? Right. That's right. That's right. All right. So. Reasons why we rock. So actually, we have here projects to scale really easy, going from the prototyping phase to yeah to uh, to production or industrialization phase. We don't use this time to market. This is in five minutes we can have everything working, and we have a flexible pricing adapted to to your use cases. Okay, so what what we are gonna do today? So we are gonna play with uh, with our newest uh, device on the things they own. So since a few days ago, <laughs> we have our first product on the website, but it's a cold chain tracker. So we can track and monitorize with a Sigfox device um, um, assets that are moving around yeah, the world and actually understanding in real time what's their temperature, humidity, state of the battery, and light and uh, setting up notifications and alarms, right? This is a device that we, that we provide nowadays. So it uh, can track temperature from minus 20 degrees uh, Celsius to plus 40, uh, 54. The dimensions are 7 centimeters, almost 8 centimeters by 4 by 2. It's a release installation, can be several ways to install it uh, with this box. It's, um, it's up to three years of battery life in the normal conditions. It brings Sigfox connectivity with the Spotit or geolocalization services now. And <coughs> sorry, it can have a Wi Fi reader optional or a GPS reader in case that it makes sense to have GPS. In this case, usually the, the most uh, interesting product right now it's, it's, uh, it's a cold chain tracker, a tracker with no GPS, with no Wi Fi at the moment, just with the Sigfox geolocation connectivity. All right, so what's, what's about today's webinar? So we are going to emulate uh, one uh, track that is uh, moving around Barcelona, right? So the goal is to do it with our own uh, product. But what we are going to do, because uh, in this case, you, uh, you are going to be able to reproduce it in your houses, it's to use a PyCom, right? A PyCom is a... Um, a board made by yeah by Pycom uh, with Sigfox and Wi-Fi that it's really easy to program, etc. We connected to the things I owe. We are gonna uh, publish this code into our GitHub account and and to to make sure that you can reproduce it at your uh, in your places if you have a Pycom. We also have some Arduinos with Sigfox, Smart Everything, etc. We will make sure that these examples will be available with all of these uh, prototyping boards or with, with our cold chain tracker solution as well, OK? So <coughs> sorry, the PyCom device in a, in a track will, uh, will it's, it's going to send uh, every how many minutes, Carlos? Every one minute, just for testing purposes only. OK, yeah. every, every minute uh, data to Sigfox. And Sigfox is going to send the data to the things that you We are going to show you all of these steps, right? Um, and then what we are going to do is to program with Cloud Code, uh, uh, connect with Twilio, and send real-time phone calls and real-time SMS. Right? Perfect. So let's start. So let's go for the demo. OK, so before the demo, so uh, after the demo, we are going to have some Q&A, right? So use the chat tool that you have on the, on the right of the, yeah, of the, of the video. Feel free to start uh, making questions now after the after the demo. 
we are going to do this Q&A session answering all your questions uh, that you can have on the live chat, right? OK, so let's start. All yours, Carlos. OK. First of all, we need to create an account to things.io. So let's move first to the things.io. Inside, uh, we can create on try it for free. And um, for me, uh, I already have an account. But for all of you that don't have it, please uh, um, click on create an account. And inside, introduce your username that will be appearing on the top right of the dashboard. In this case, it would be I'm going to introduce my email and also my password. I create the terms of and privacy policy. And also make sure that you, that you check I'm not a robot. OK, this says I'm already registered, so I'm going to use another one. OK, so once uh, we, we are in, please make sure uh, we use the form in order to give response to you in the shortest time possible. Fantastic. You can see this chat where I, I ask you if we can help you with anything. Just feel free to, to to contact with this chat that you can see on the on the right side on the um, yeah on the bottom we will try to give you support as, as soon as possible okay once we're in uh, we are going to create a Sigfox product in this case as we are using a a call chain tracker we're going to create a product called this way So let's create a new product. And it will be cold chain devices. Inside that product, make sure uh, you use Akedo slash smart everything as the board. So as you can see here, uh, the format, it will get changed to Sigfox. OK, that's right. Once we have created the product, please make sure you enter the product and copy the subscription URL for that product. This subscription URL, it will be the URL used in the callback creation at the backend of Sigfox. So let's move to the Sigfox backend. So right now, I'm in my account. And let's imagine I, I've already activated my product. So if you don't know how to, how to activate your own product in backend.tickfox, it will be this URL, slash activate. And once you follow this process for your own device and later on for your own uh, country, providing, providing cellular and Sigfox uh, communications, you will make sure that um, you edit the device type for your device in order to have the callbacks redirected to the things that I owe. In this case, we are using a PyCom device already registered. So let's create a new callback that will uh, send the data to the things. In this case, I'm going to create a new callback, a custom callback inside. I'm going to choose POST as the HTTP method and leave the other uh, options as, as they are. So for the URL pattern, make sure you copy the previous subscription URL that you have here and paste it. Well, oops, excuse me. 
Okay. So make sure you copy the subscription URL from your product and paste it inside the URL pattern. Okay. So if that's not any problem, the callback will be created. And now uh, we can move to the Sigfox parser code for the device. So now the, the Sigfox is uh, sending the callbacks back to, to us. So we are getting the, the Sigfox payloads. Okay. And now it's time to, um, every time that we get these payloads, to understand what all these 12 bytes from Sigfox means. That so is what we do the Sigfox payloads. That's correct. So We're starting getting messages, right? Yes. So let's take a look about which devices are being sent. Yeah, we have these devices. Okay. Let's go and see the Cfox payload that we are getting. Okay. Right now we are getting um, raw data. That this datum is the temperature in in an hexadecimal uh, bytes. So we need to transform this data into actual temperature. So for the Sigfox parser that we need to create, let's move to Cloud Code. It's the fifth uh, column row on the left. Inside, let's let's uh, edit the Sigfox parser. Yeah. Uh, so automatically, every time that you create a Sigfox product, uh, automatically we will we will create a function called Sigfox parser, where you will need to do this decoder from the twelve bytes from Sigfox to to data that we can understand. That's right. So let's add it. Uh, at the beginning, we will see that uh, the Sigfox parser is empty. So the Sigfox parser is using a uh, array of objects. And every object has a key and a value. The key will be the, the resource that will be written into the, the things.io. And the value will be the value associated to that resource in order to later on um, use that data. So let's, in my case, I'm going to copy the previous, the previous uh, Sigfox parser that I've created. OK. All right, we have copied this. OK. So I'm going to paste this. Let's save it, first of all. So let me tell you real quick what, did co what this code does. So this code is um, giving us, first of all, decoding the temperature. And later on um, is uh, evaluating if the temperature is uh, beyond is above is um, above of below the uh, certain threshold. In this case, I assume that the threshold is thirty, but we can change that to uh, to a better value if needed. We decode the the Cfox payload here, so we, we do the calculations. No, that's correct. And we decode it here. We have the threshold defined to thirty degrees. Probably we are yeah hotter in this room than thirty degrees at this point. I'm sure about it. <laughs> and here, once we have all the temperature done, we compare the current temperature with the, with the threshold, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. So maybe we, we can start uh, having only this data. So let's delete this part. What do you think? Okay. Um, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Yeah, there it is. Else, right? Correct. That should be all. That should work. Perfect. So if we go back to to things, the device, we have temperature now. We have last time it was twenty seven, twenty seven, around sixty two degrees. We can try to have here real time data. So uh, in a minute, we will have um, the next value. So in this really quick way, yeah, maybe you can do a quick uh, dashboard, uh, no, a quick widget to visualize the data. What do you think? Sure. 
Meanwhile, we'll get the next uh, value in the next meal. So uh, we are getting, once we create uh, our account in, in the things.io, um, a new, a new um, preliminary dashboard appears. We can erase, you can erase that if you want. And let's just start with a new fresh widget. It will be called uh, temperature flux graph, let's say. And inside, uh, make sure if you are using a, a thing, make sure you click on thing resource. But let's make a product uh, chart. What do you think? OK, that's fine also. So with the product chart, actually, you can visualize all the, let's imagine that, yeah, in this case, we only have one PyCon. But let's imagine that we have yeah, 1,000 or uh, dozens. So with the product uh, widget, we can visualize all of these dozens, devices, connected, sending data at the same time in the same chart. So with the thing resource chart, as Carlos wanted to do, we only can see one. Well, we will see one anyway, but yeah, let's, let's do it uh, with a yeah, line chart. It's fine. Real time. Customize it. Well, let's have, yeah, 100 values. Temperature. Yeah. No, it's fine. So, Tom. No? Okay, we have we need to increase uh, uh, the values. So let's take a look at the values that got received from Sigfox yeah. backend. So we have these temperatures, it's getting high. Fantastic. It seems that it works. Yes. Right? So let's start uh, making this phone call happen. OK. What do you think? Let's go. So usually, let's maybe explain um, cloud code a little bit. Um, just, just remember, triggers are algorithms executed in real time. Every time that we get data, uh, it triggers are getting executed. We give here two seconds of computation. This is a place, actually, to do phone calls, SMS, uh, <coughs> emails, because it's a real-time uh, place. So algorithms that are getting launched. Jobs that algorithms launch every hour or every day. So that give us uh, this vision of aggregating data, calculation of maximums, minimums, map reduce, uh, predictive maintenance, etc. Or even daily emails or monthly emails or weekly emails. And finally, we have functions that algorithms that can be launched from triggers and jobs or from outside. Okay. Having said that, Sigfox parsers for us are special uh, functions. <coughs> so every time that we get a payload from Sigfox, uh, this Sigfox parser it, uh, it gets executed. So it's kind of a trigger uh, with um, with Sigfox. Okay. So I think we still have this here. Uh, we can have this. Okay. Yes. So okay, let's explain. Uh, let's talk about this threshold. Okay. So once the temperature in this in this case reaches uh, thirty degrees, right now we are on uh, twenty seven dot dot eight dot nine twenty eight. If we, if we can uh, make the temperature sense a little bit hotter, uh, we, we will be able to, um, first, first of all, send an email. In this case, we provide uh, several services of emailing. In this case, we are using SendGrid with our own user from the things. And it's simple as, as uh, specifying um, from which email do you want to send it and to which email do you want to send. In this case, uh, the subject would be temperature alarm. And the message would be alarm temperature above threshold. In this case, threshold will be 30. And 
the temperature that actually is being received from the Sigfox device. Also, we have two, two more steps. And the first one is the Twilio service in order to make um, the send an SMS to your phone or actually to make a phone call from to your phone again using uh, using the service. So the easiest way here is just to register at Twilio or at SendGrid or MailChimp and actually provide your tokens uh, to the things and actually you can pay uh, yeah, the bills from your SMS or phone calls, etc. This is the easiest way. Okay, and here we have two examples, right? Correct. So the first one, um, let's try if you want uh, the SMS. Yeah, exactly. So in, in this commented um, uh, part of code, we have uh, in the example of how to send uh, a message, an SMS. Okay, and in the second part of code, we have the way to do a phone call. Actually, the telephone number can be embedded into the into the user settings or the device settings, etc. Exactly. And um, yeah, and then uh, because we use uh, Twilio, there is a specific way to define. Uh, what's the message or the voice that you want to get? Uh, that you want to listen from a phone call? So yeah, in this case, we set up a Heroku machine with this XML with TwiML that uh, it's needed uh, that it's defined here. So you can define your own uh, message uh, actually to to get um, to get back from from Twilio. All right. So let's um, let's try to to use it. What what's the telephone number that we are gonna that we are gonna call? My phone, actually. Yeah, this, okay. So girls uh, from from the wall, is this a Carlos phone? <laughs> so it's it, it's your phone uh, ready to get data? Yes, sure. So let me save. Um, let me save. Yeah. So maybe put it on phone. Um, so let's uh, I don't see here any data. Okay, so we already have a call. Uh, yeah. Okay, no, no, it's a bit. But it's it's just an example. Actually, yeah, you cannot see. Oops, I'm, I'm here stuck. Sorry. Uh, you cannot see, it, but Carlos was uh, holding with his hand uh, the sensor. Actually, so we got um, this message. So we got um, no. Actually, we are not storing. Um, we are not storing the. Okay, we got uh, MTRIs from Sigfox. Maybe we got. Uh, um, let us check what's going on here. So, yeah, this is a problem when, uh, yeah, when we get this error, let's call to SMS now, maybe. Oops, um, okay, sorry. This goes here. So maybe SMS will be better for for noise reasons. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, and then all right. So now let me yeah, let me check. In, in real time, what is happening here? I wanted to have here. Uh, yeah, let's go to as Carla say to the thing resource whole chain. Let's select this device. I want to see the temperature. Uh, let's see, yeah, land chart in real time. To customize it, hundred values, get Celsius. Or let's do. Uh, yeah, we are starting getting the first. Uh, Messages. So yeah, we are 32 degrees right now. So maybe yeah, we can uh, blow <coughs> the sensor as well uh, to bring it to 
So, actually, yeah, let's do again the, the phone call to show you that again we can do the all right so we are still 30 something in the next message we will get the uh, we hope that we will get the phone call um and actually it's uh, as you see it's it's really straightforward it was like what 10 minutes going from nothing to having a Python or a cold chain tracker connected, sending data uh, to the things, uh, and setting up a, a yeah, phone call uh, or notification. It's pretty straightforward. So um, yeah, uh, this is how, how the things are your words. Mm, what else? What are we missing? Carlos? Anything else? I think we're, yeah, we're fine. Uh, so I think we are just missing the, yeah. the phone call from, yeah, from sick folks. Well, from sick folks, from, yeah, from actually, yeah, the device. Uh, we should get uh, a phone call in, yeah, another phone. Oh, okay, you just silent the. I yeah. silenced the phone, but. So you silent it. Right now it's ringing. Okay, yes. So yeah, stop it. Yes, ignore it. And, uh, and in theory, it will it, it will gonna call you again in, in a few seconds. Uh, actually, Twilio, it's it's pretty funny because it calls you uh, up to five times if you don't if you ignore the if you if you ignore the phone call. So it's pretty it's pretty funny to to use this service. Um, what else? Um, yeah, I think that that's that's all. Oops. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, ignore it again. Uh, yeah, and, and that's silent. Yeah. So as as you see, we are uh, over thirty degrees um, and upper. It's quite hot here in this <laughs> in this call. So yeah, this is what can you do with a cold chain tracker in just 10 minutes using the things that I owe. Uh, yeah, we are an IoT platform. We can help you with your projects, uh, sensing or monitoring temperature, humidity, etc. in a really easy way, really quickly way, no uh, developments needed. No, no, no special uh, requirements. So it, it, it works out of the box, um, yeah. And that's what we do. So now it's time for Q and A, I guess. Uh, let's, uh, yeah, you silent. Uh, yeah, maybe let's stop the Python. Then we, uh, we don't get any any message. So time for Q and A. Um, feel free to write your questions um, of um, yeah on the on the chat tool. We will be here about ten minutes. Uh, meaning your uh, your requests or your answer, or, yeah, your questions, comments, feedback. But yeah, in, as I say, uh, yeah, we can integrate at this point. Twilio, Twitter, Mailchimp, Sendry. Uh, what else? Say yes, go on Amazon. Actually, exactly. Uh, Amazon. Um, we can integrate as well. Um, yeah, chatbots, we're doing stuff with chatbots, Azure ML for machine learning. Mm, yeah, so CartoDB, for example, it's also integrated with APIs from, from our cloud code. Um, so yeah, you can do a lot of integration with third-party services, actually, with, um, with the things um, automatically, as you have seen. So it's pretty straightforward. The code will be available on GitHub. Um, and what else? Um, I think very good. Indeed. Any questions? Yeah, so we're waiting for your questions. If there are no questions, uh, yeah, if there are no questions in the next couple of minutes, uh, yeah, we are going to do the next uh, webinar in um, in the next uh, in the next three four weeks. 
uh, we are going to talk, yeah, we are still thinking about what we are going to talk, probably, I don't know, if by directional communication with sick folks, or about the new geolocation services, or, yeah, it's, we are still uh, thinking about that. Um, here you have my contact details in case that you want to contact me for any project or any question or any, anything that we, you think that we can help you. And if you don't have any question uh, by chat, um, yeah, we, we are going to leave you here. Yes, it was a pleasure to share again with your webinar, Carlos. That's right. Uh, let's stay connected. I'm looking forward to work with you guys. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye-bye.